Well, everyone, it was fun while it lasted, but the June Mets are back. Allow me to be frank once again. We got uh, Patrick Regazzo from Mets Marized and Avery Zaretsky as the Mets have gone back to sucking. It's just a matter of time before they're back below 500. I, I, I honestly think that even though they've made a little bit of a comeback today, it's just, it's just what they do. The Mets are always, always teasing, never pleasing. Frank, it's uh, it's it's really we've fallen on hard times. I mean, you and I were going to the game on Saturday, and uh, as you were already saying, the Braves are going to sweep the Mets, and lo and behold, they did. Uh, I didn't expect that we would see the same fate in this series against the Cubs. It's a huge one with the Mets trailing them coming into the series of two games in the wild card, and uh, you know it's just been bad now two nights in a row. Noah Syndergaard got lit up, giving up ten runs in three innings tonight, and. It's just, it has not looked good. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, can you answer me a question this? You send him up to bat in the second inning. What do you think he's good there? You, you think he's going to magically find it in the third? I think that was just more of they didn't want to, you know, use up all their pinch hitters, you know, early on in the game because they knew they were going to need him, you know, going forward because because he obviously he was he wasn't making it long into this game, not even five innings. So I, I think that that was just the type of situation where it was two outs and no one on, so you might as well bat him and at least try and get another inning out of him, and that's what he did. So, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to nitpick there with Callaway. I do understand it. Um, but, again, yeah, I would have pulled Syndergaard at eight runs and not ten because, uh, look, obviously now the Mets fought back a bit, and it's ten to six right now in the top of the eighth inning, and, uh, you know, it would be a two-run game instead of a four-run game. And, and you know what's going to happen tomorrow. DeGrom's going to be on the mound. He'll pitch his usual DeGromness. He'll allow maybe one run, maybe two runs. One will be unearned. And uh, John Lester will throw a complete game one hitter. They'll, they're going to lose two to one tomorrow, probably. That's my guess. It's the typical score of every DeGrom start. They, they'll lose two to one. And then they're going to get swept in Philadelphia, too, and be back below 500. It'll I be got a nine game losing streak. And then I actually think they'll actually get swept in Washington, too. I think, that, I think this losing streak will end up being 12 to 15 games when it's all over. It's been done. I got killed yesterday for tweeting that the Mets were in a brutal 12-game stretch with the three against the Cubs, and then they have to go to Philly Friday for three games, and then to D.C. for three games, and the Nats are red hot. And even the Phillies are gaining steam. I know that they lost two out of three to the Marlins over the weekend, but they jumped the Mets in the standings. They're winning again tonight. They have a very easy schedule right now. And... Uh, you know, it's lo and behold, our nightmares have come true. Uh, the Mets really have been laying an egg, and you know they've gone cold at the, at the wrong time. Their bats it, it, are asleep. It, it, it's like those white uniforms just erased everything that was good that happened. That does seem, you know, that is kind of when things, you know, took a turn. I mean, the Mets swept the Indians last week, which none of us expected, and then uh, ever since the Players' Weekend, they changed their uniforms to so those hideous white uniforms with the weird black hats. They've been the Mets are about to go to zero and five if they don't come back tonight. And 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 I hear that they that they're actually a hit. The hottest selling jerseys they're thinking about making them permanent. The only jerseys that'll be worn. That the uh, that the uh, that the uh, the hipster crowd loves them. Where'd you hear that from, Frank? Who's saying that? Well, well, we heard we heard that the players actually from a reliable source that the players actually don't like these uniforms. That they thought they were stupid. Well, I can tell you so what. Uh, uh, you did, it's more than a reliable source now. We now know that Pete uh, Alonzo didn't like him. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, Alonzo aired it out afterwards. But yes, but I mean, no one likes. I mean, Avery, even you saw it. Like over the weekend, the Yankees and Dodgers finally played each other, and they both have you know storied franchises, storied uniforms, and they had to wear those ugly ass black and white uniforms against each other. Yeah, we talked about it on the short porch. It was kind of ridiculous. Just the fact that. Like you said, they're two storied franchises, and they're going against each other for the first time in a long time. And they're wearing these—I wouldn't say ugly. I actually kind of like the black uniforms, but the white just look ridiculous. I thought the black—they kind of had a little swagger to them, like Tommy Canely would just look like an absolute beast in them. 
but yeah, I I agree. I don't really know how how it is. Like we were talking about it too, you know, MLB thinking about ways to grow the game. Like, oh, you know, let's let people post our videos. No, yeah. instead we'll just let the players wear stupid jerseys. Like, I don't get it. I I I, I was watching the highlights on Sports Center at a, point, a certain point Sunday, and it just got to the point where. I couldn't take it anymore because every uniform looked the same. Every game looked the same. Yeah, it looked like uh, like the Japanese league, kind of like those type of uniforms almost. But, uh, yeah, but like with the Yankees and Dodgers, at least, like they have, you know, great uniforms. And they never, we never get to see those uniforms against each other unless they played each other in a World Series, which of course hasn't happened in a long time. But, uh, yeah, I just, like it's not needed. Like last year, they had the nickname weekend. They started this shit and it was like, the Mets, they remember they had the uh, the blue vests and like the orange sleeves and the orange hats. Well, they started too. They did it, and they also did it in twenty uh, seventeen, and it was the same as last year, pretty much. But like what I was saying to you, Frank, over the weekend, like this is just like stuff that like middle schoolers care about in baseball. Like I guess they're trying to attract the younger audience, but like as a you know as an older baseball fan, I don't give like I don't care about that stuff. Like you know, it's just all it's for the fans, but like no one cares besides like the very young crowd. But, like even. Even so, who's going to purchase a jersey with the nickname on the back? Like, why would you want that? But at least those had color. Yeah, you're right. The last two years, they did. But. At, least, at least they had. They looked like the team that they were representing. They, the Mets looked like the Mets. Yeah, I don't really know what they were going for this they're, year. They're not like, not like, uh, not like a dystopian prison movie. The, 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 the dystopian prison softball team. I mean, as I said, it was like Pong. Pong baseball. White and black. Like, like even if you sold those, those jerseys, where would you ever wear them? I can't even think of a place I would ever wear a white jersey. Just with literally just white. Praise your gentlemen. Yeah, well, Todd Frazier, who he was 11 for his last 110 and finally got benched coming into this game, uh, actually came off the bench tonight and is two for two and just missed a home run there, just missing the foul pole on the, uh, on the left field line. But, but everything, that, everything that could go wrong for the Mets this weekend went wrong for the Mets this weekend. Yeah, and the thing is the Mets have been playing better defense in this good stretch that they've had over the last like month and a half or so. And, like, the last just couple games, they've been brutal in the field. It looks like the same team that they were in, you know, in the first three months of the season. I mean, uh, let, let's face it. The uh, things started falling apart for Syndergaard when uh, Rosario had his error. Yeah, but the thing is, Syndergaard, and, like, I noticed this, and also uh, Keith and Ron also mentioned it, too, afterwards. Syndergaard couldn't put anyone away. At all. He was getting, you know, he, it's not like he was really behind in his counts. He just, he couldn't put guys away. And when that's happening, I don't think he didn't have control of his slider tonight. And we, we saw what he's like without a slider this year in April. And uh, I just don't think that he had it tonight. It was his, literally, it was his worst career start. McNeil rips a double down the line. Uh, Frazier goes to third, second and third, no outs now in uh, the bottom of the eighth inning. With, um... J.D. Davis coming up. Davis grounded into a big double play a couple innings ago to kill a rally, so hopefully... And it's like the white the, the white just uh, like erased all the magic from him. Yeah, ever since the jingle with you and Greg. We had a run-in with Greg over the weekend at Barstool at the Park. Frank and him, uh, I know you guys saw Frank and him, uh, you know, did a... stayed up there the whole game. Yeah, stayed up there the whole game. I mean, look, they did... The, 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 we, he, uh, he should have stayed there the whole game. I mean, literally, the Mets scored the four runs while he was there. Yeah, as soon as he, you guys saw in the, in the home run celebration video of Frank waiting over while the ball was in the air, um, he, uh, he, that was the whole time Greg was in that. That was the whole time Greg was up there. It was The Mets were down 4-1, to and then they took 5-4 lead. He disappears, and then the Mets wind up losing 9-5. to so, I mean, Danny Echeverria just killing him all weekend. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, everyone's complaining about Echeverria, and, like, yes, he killed the Mets over the weekend. And that's just classic. But, like, 
you can kill the Wilpons all you want for being cheap. Like, Echeverria did not earn a million dollar signing bonus. So they cut him loose. And that's business. That's why this game's a business. He's an asset, you know? They don't look at him as a, as a person. And, like, if he was performing, he would have gotten that raise, but he didn't. But unfortunately, he came back to bite the Mets in the ass. He was pissed off. And then off. Billy Hamilton just, like, the, the, the Mets couldn't get him out. Yeah, I mean, the list goes on and on. Like, uh, every former Mets going to kill them. Um, they just, like, it's it happens year in and year out. It doesn't matter who it is. Hansel Robles goes to the Angels. He's a he's one of their best relievers. Um, just, you know, you could it, – it's just like the curse of the Mets. And now it's the curse of the white uniforms, you know. Might, it might be, um, you know, dragging this team down. Hey, you guys are always coming up with shit just to make it seem like you guys got some curse on you. You guys suck. <laughs> the Mets are fucking built on an Indian burial ground. We all know it. Yeah, we could talk there, about... There has to be. There has to be. Hey, you know what? We could talk about a good team. We could talk about an 88-win baseball team. Aaron Judge. Let me tell you. Aaron Judge in his last 11 games. He's batting 383, six home runs, 10 RBIs. And he's, I mean, he's just crushing the ball. This is a scary thought. Like, I, nobody really knows what Aaron Judge is at 100%. And if this is what it is, I mean, the MLB should be scared. I mean, he's crushing the ball every game now. He, yeah. So has he gotten over his August curse of his career? I think so. I, I think that, um, I, I mean, obviously a guy who's been plagued with injuries I think this is his time now to really like show his full potential, and he's doing it right now. Like he's showing what he can be at a hundred percent, and that's a dominant player in the league. Yeah, I mean, there's no question how dominant he is. It's just injuries have slowed him. I'd say the last two seasons or so. Um, now it seems like he's healthy, so that's you know that's great for the Yankees moving forward. I saw something today. Uh, the Yankees have 20 home runs from every spot in their batting order. Yeah, it's oh. absolutely insane. That's, absolutely insane i just don't understand like they set a new fucking home run record of some sort like every single year yeah there's uh well gary sanchez first of all gary sanchez leads the mlb in catcher home runs at 30 now he had his 30th home run he's he's breaking records like insane right now um this one catchers with multiple 30 home run seasons in their first five mlb seasons mike piazza has uh three of them Sanchez, two, Roy Campanella with two, and Rudy York. So there's four catchers right there that have all had multiple 30 home run seasons in their first five MLB seasons. So what, he's what, up there with some high praise. What I can't believe is what Mike Ford is doing now. Oh my, is, is he like Barry Bonds? <laughs> What's going on? He's actually a guest on the short porch. We had him. Uh, he called in uh, yesterday. So he's going to be on the show tomorrow. I just I, I got to edit that. But, um, yeah, that'll be a good one. I'll give that a listen at work tomorrow. Uh, that's he's just like the latest, you know, to the list of Yankees who come up and, you know, hit way over their fucking talent level. But yeah, he, you know, the only is they just gotta get enough pitching in the playoffs. Yeah, and I think they will. So Severino is actually scheduled to pitch in a uh, minor league game coming up, and um, Montgomery actually. There was a uh, Brian Hotch had a report today. It was a really good one. I'll try to find it, but it, it was something along the lines of um, Severino's going to pitch. Yes. Um, yeah, Jordan Montgomery will pitch Friday for the Rail Riders, and Luis Severino will join the Rail Riders to start on Sunday. So everything is starting to come full circle for the Yankees. He also mentioned that Dylan Batances had a really good session today, and he'll throw another BP slash sim on Saturday. Um, I know they also mentioned that Clint Frazier – uh, might be called up in September, according to Aaron Boone. Obviously, I feel like that's a good move. I mean, he's just another guy who they can throw into that lineup who, you know, it, it's crazy. I was thinking about it the other day. There's so many guys in this Yankee team who would be on starting lineup somewhere else that just won't fit in come playoff time. I mean, now what happened to Gio Urshela today? Um, so I saw something about the, uh, there was an update that he, you know, he got knocked out of the game. It was, no one really knew what it was, but they just said that at the end they said it was uh, groin tightness, according to uh, Yes Network. So 
hopefully it's nothing significant. But yet again, it's just like that. We talk about it, this next man up mentality where these guys are just stepping up and everybody's just bulldozing into the lineup. And, you know, you look at Mike Ford, like you were saying, I mean, he's just tearing it up. It's crazy. Yeah, well, speaking of next man up, uh, Barstool at the Park was last Saturday night at City Field, and Frank the Tank Fleming was the next man up as KFC and Clem did not show up to the event. Frank stole the show completely and was the headliner. Frank, you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, uh, well, I, I, had, uh, I mean, everyone expected KFC to be there because he, like, hyped it up, but I guess for some <laughs> reason or another he couldn't make it, so... I was the one everyone was gravitating towards. Everyone was surrounding me and the, listening to what I said, my hot dog reviews. I, I just posted the latest hot dog review to ordinary hot dogs at best at City Field. They were and it wasn't the hot dogs were bad so much. Well, the second one, the one from the guy, the vendor walking around, that was not a really good hot dog. But the, the one from the concession stand, the hot dog was good. The bread was awful. Yeah, the bread was really, really stale. Our first review that we did, Frank, uh, we also were we were holding on to those hot dogs for a good twenty minutes, so they were kind of cold. Um, but the bread was like fucking awful. Yeah, well, the, the bread was the reason. There the was a big reason why the hot dogs were actually good, but it was the bread that was just awful. Frank, were, were you surprised about um, how many views that video got? Well, the, uh, the the hot dog views are all getting like uh, thousands and thousands of views. But specifically, the one that was taken of you when uh, Alonzo hit the homer. Oh yeah, that, well, that, it always surprises me how many hits I get. That was three hundred and sixty thousand views, though. Wow, like, that's an insane number. I had to turn my notifications off at one point because my phone was just literally just the almost. I thought Alonzo just cracked the <laughs> so home by the pitcher's reaction there, and uh, it was a weak fly out to center. Alonzo has been swinging for the fence way too much. Way he's too much. Been, he's been batting 170 now in the last week or so when they need him the most. And all he has to do, you know, he's his best when he's hitting to all fields, and he, we've seen that he has the, he's capable of doing so. He's just he's, He gets way too home run happy, and, like, there – was a prime example. Like Mets are down three runs now, and there's a runner at third, and all he needs to do is just keep the do you line. Think, do you think that could be a downfall for him? Like he's a, a home run, home runner bus kind of guy. You know, is he going to be that kind of guy, or do you think? I mean, it's so early in his career, you won't know. I mean, he's obviously some something really special, but do you think he's going to be at some points that home runner bus guy? When he was at guy? his best earlier in the year, he wasn't. And, and, and to, to tell you the truth, I'll take a two sixty hitter. You know, yeah, home I mean, it's the kind guys. of judge. Like Aaron Judge is going to be a 270, 280 career guy, but he's going to hit those home runs. You know, if he stays healthy, he's going to uh, be. I mean, did you, when I think home run or bust, I think people like uh, like Jay Bruce, who, as I once said, there once was a man who had no use. His <laughs> name is Jay Bruce. No, I, I think I think that Alonzo, yeah, what gets him into trouble and what gets him into slumps is when he gets way too home run happy. And we've seen the same thing from Conforto over the years. We used to see it from Jose Reyes for years. As soon as they start going deep a couple times, then that's all they're swinging for is the fences. And then it you know, gets them into trouble. They pop up a lot of stuff. They strike out a lot. When really they could be a lot more productive, you know, if they're just, you know, focusing on on, on hitting. Like the home runs will come. When you know? Conforto goes line to line, that's when he's at his best. With Alonzo, you can tell that whenever he – He's definitely going for the fence because when he, whenever he grounds out, like he'll take a slider outside and he'll pull it because he's so just geared up to try and just swing with all he's got. But when he's when he's on, he's going opposite field and he's still hitting the bombs. So like he just he just needs to he, whatever the pitcher gives him, that's what he has to take. If he if he just keeps getting ahead of the ball, he's just either going to strike out or he's just going to ground out the third base every time. I want to uh, I want to get back to. Um that video of Frank right. celebrating at, at the park. Uh, of course, you know, we're all gathered around. The Mets are down 4-2, to two and Alonzo's up at the plate. And he, off the crack of the bat, you know, you heard that he hit it hard. But he's a guy, when he makes contact, you know, you know when he's connected. I saw him swing, and I saw the ball immediately come flying. Like, the exit velocity must have been 
well over 110, which he like is one of the league leaders in that category. It came was coming for us fast, and instead of you know my fan instinct of watching the home run, I turned to Frank, who was on my left, and I immediately started filming him his reaction. And as you guys saw, no one knew it was gone as Frank was waiting over, you know, to kind of look over the crowd to see if the ball was going to reach the stands, and then everyone, of course, erupted. And uh, you know, I'm by no means am a am a camera guy, but you know that was just like right place at the right time, like perfect moment, and we we caught a really a gold a golden moment with Frank and of course uh Prez thought so too he loved it he uh he quote tweeted me saying it was his favorite clip of the year and talked about it on the rundown too so yeah the actual video made the rundown and I think it was funny that you got that video because literally a week before Frank you were talking about how like you don't even stand up or get out of your chair typically right and then literally we catch you like next week like literally just like hopping up and down well, um, what, the uh, not getting out of my chair. Well, that's when I'm in my usual seat. Yeah, I mean, my usual seat. I'm sitting in front of the press box, so there's no reason to. There's that. no reason to. Right, right. Yeah, just a coincidence. Yeah, yeah. The Frank was in the seat probably like ten percent of the time because really, like the fans were great there. There was, you know, it was it was a big, uh, really big turnout, and everyone recognizes Frank. Wanted to talk to Frank and was coming up to us the whole night. Frank was literally yeah. Like so it's more captain. of just to just being up talking to uh, talking to talking to Greg and talking to the people that were up there for the bar stool in the park. Yeah, that's that's funny. Uh, me and Nick listened to the Gotta Believe pod today, and KFC was saying that Greg was asking him to talk business before uh, bar stool at the park. <laughs> Greg was a great. He was a great guy, though. He was he was him and Frank were singing a lot of du- duets and. Uh, yeah, and he, and he was the good luck charm, and as soon as he fucking disappeared is when, you know, the wheels came off. But all in all, it was a really good night. Um, you know, they should they should do another one of those. Avery, did the, are, is Barstool going to do, like, a Yankees at the park ever? No, well, yeah, that we do uh, Barstool at the ballpark for the Yankees, um, but we end it. Our last one was against the Sox, so we end it early because, you know, like, once football season starts, it, you see, like, a decline in numbers. We don't usually sell out. But we, do, I think we did, we do four. So we did, we did four this year, and they all sold out. So it was awesome. Did you go to the, all of them? Not every single one. No, I, I went to one of them. Was I, it think like, I think there's another one on the 14th. So City. the so the Mets so the Mets deal is way better. Um, I will say because it goes till the seventh inning, right? The food and the drinks goes. Yeah, so Yankees, Yankee is only uh, it's from like an hour and a half before until the start of the game. And you know it's funny in the seventh inning, boy, you see that one guy, the off the alcohol compliance officer, come by. Yeah, Frank was trolling him the other night too. Yeah, cook. yeah. I, I mean, where when you're when you're, you're seven years old, you go, you go. I grow up. I want to be an alcoholic compliance officer. I'm going to stop everyone from having fun. And I'm going to start here. I'm going to throw out everyone's birthday cake. It's time to have a cutoff. Yes, that's who I am. That's what I'm going to do when I grow up. How many seven-year-olds do you know talk like that? <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, while we were at the game, we got a huge Schefter bomb dropped on us too uh, of course the shocking news of andrew luck retiring shit out of luck the uh, indianapolis Colts are shit out of luck Bo- uh, I, I, I and then of course every everyone uh, booing luck and it's like 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 there's two different sides to it you have like the the, the group the, the group that's like oh you gotta understand you shouldn't boo him, and you got the, the, the like the passionate fans. No, fuck that! I'm gonna boo him. Well, the thing is, Hank had a really good take on it on part of my take on Monday. He had said he was like, "Oh, like yeah, they booed him." And he's like, "Imagine if it was Boston, Philly, or New York. They'd all be like, oh, typical of those fan bases in those sports cities.' But because it's the Colts, everyone's like, "Oh no, it's okay that they booed him." Like, you know, I, like I, I actually think it was a, an emotional reaction. That the story, the story leaked at the wrong time. Well, here, here's the problem. I think the, you know, we're saying the problem is, is that he did it so close to the football season. I right. mean, that that's what angered people. And you know, the booing thing. I mean, you got a bunch of like 
you know, drunk a holes. I mean, it's preseason football. I mean, you know, they're cheap tickets. It's probably a oh, ch- I, chance for I, every all those drunk a holes to go to the game. And I, you know, I, for a sense, I feel bad. Like I understand his situation. I understand what he's going through. And I think this is going to be a segue to a lot of guys who are feeling the same way that are going to do it. I feel like uh, Andrew Luck isn't going to be the biggest name to do it this season. I really. But do. if you think really Andrew Luck. I now I I really don't think Andrew Luck has played his last football game. Really, he needs to he needs to take maybe a year or two off, and then maybe he'll come back if his body you know has recovered. But even then, is it like maybe he'll be at the point either if he doesn't miss the game, you know, if he doesn't miss playing, he'll be like, all right, like why the hell would I want to come back and you know get to that you know low point physically again. You know, now, he, now and a lot of this has to do with the Colts just doing a piss poor job of uh, protecting him. Yes, yeah, so they said Ryan Gregson should get fired for, or should get arrested for negligence for ignoring the. Uh, I mean, he's already been fired. Uh, yeah. the, 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 you know, there's a former Barstool guy that knows all about Pat, uh, about Ryan Gregson and what a terrible GM he is. Patty McAfee. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, especially with the booing too, like. It's just that's the emotion of the fans. Like, yeah. Ima- imagine if Eli Manning retired at age twenty nine, everyone would be in shambles. Well, like at the at the same time, like, and and also Adam Schefter's like, oh, Luck was going to announce it as p- p- uh, press conference tomorrow, but his timeline got moved up, and it's because Schefter's the one who moved the timeline up for him. Somebody in the Colts organization or close to Luck leaked and, it. And and, and uh, did you see some of the NFL films behind the scenes footage? No, I did not. He didn't tell his teammates. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't tell. Well, he was oh. going to. He was planning on doing it that day, but Schefter leaked it. Now, he, here's my here's my thing. Well, what happened was Let's when Schefter go. leaked it, yeah. there were play, there were fans calling over Colt starters saying that Luck is retiring, and they're like, no, it's not happening. And then they showed it on the phone. They went over to talk to Luck, and Luck confirmed it to them. Yeah, I mean, here, here's here's my thing. I, I, you can compare it with the whole Rob Gronkowski thing. I mean, it's all based on timing. I mean, Rob did it after this, like you know, just about after the season. So it's just kind of like that thing where you know the the timing played a factor. And now you look at both sides. Everybody's like very sympathetic for Rob Gronkowski, but a, a lot of people were attacking Andrew Luck. So it's just if Andrew Luck you know, announces retirement after the draft or after uh, before free agency started. Nobody would have had a problem with it. Yeah, it would have been a whole different thing. A thousand percent. I couldn't agree more, Frank. It also I, has like a financial impact because you're talking about all the people that have these season tickets and now they're stuck with it and they don't even know what product they have on the field. I mean, well, literally. How about, like, fantasy, uh, how about the fantasy football p- people or people who have already put down money for the Colts to uh, go far in the playoffs who are – Right now, looking at a, a bet ticket that's gonna just that they might as well just rip up right now. Well, the ticket was a thousand. Someone placed a thousand dollars to win eleven thousand for the Colts to win the Super Bowl. Or no, no, it was for Luck to win MVP. Right. What? What? So does that bet stand? I I don't even know. Like, nope. I don't. I don't really. Yeah, I guess it's <laughs> just you cut your losses. Could there, you imagine? I don't know. I it was pretty risky. I mean, Luck is was a great player, but and he had a really good year last year. But to bet him as your MVP, uh, you know, that was kind of a dumb bet. Hey, hey, Frank. About forty minutes ago, Devontae Parker put up on his Insta story, uh, like just like a peace sign emoji with like a black screen. Uh oh. Wonder what that could mean. Uh, incarcerated Bob's tweeting about it. I can't. I. I mean, that guy's he has been right about a lot of things recently. Yeah, I mean, not, obviously, he's not like a verified source, but he's been right on a good. I mean, ever since I, I didn't, well, I didn't have any faith in him until he was right about the Panarin thing before everyone else. And I was like, all yeah. right, there and he we was, go. He was right about the Golden Tate suspension too last month. Yep. But, um, yeah, hey, maybe so that was actually what we were going to talk about next. Jadavion Clowney was meeting with the Miami Dolphins, so maybe there's some type of trade there that he's involved in. No, if it, if it's anything higher than a second round pick, no, 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 hell no. Even for an elite pass rusher, I will not give up a first round pick for Jadavion Clowney. 
had injury problems. That's that's really exactly. Problem. Yeah. I, I I honestly think the Miami Dolphins might be the worst team in the NFL this year. I honestly think that. I mean, Rosen's looked pretty good in preseason. I I I don't care how even even if they were like the third or fourth worst, I don't think they're in a position to trade for Clowney only because of his injury situation, and I just don't think that's what their need is right now. I, 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 I think if Fitzmagic has some of those quirky games where he might steal a game or two, they might accidentally win five games. But I think that's the ceiling for this Dolphin team. There is not a lot of talent on the team. The offensive line is, is mediocre. They're, they're, they're even thinking about shopping players. I've heard that Kiko Alonso's on the trade uh, He's on the uh, the trading block. Uh, Devontae Parker's on the trading block. I don't know that maybe that's what the peace sign stands for. Is is it, are you happy about? Aren't you to some degree happy about that though, Frank? Like the tank, like to fully embrace it. If 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 it's if it's that's the time. If it's, it, I'd rather go four and twelve than six and ten or seven and nine. Yeah, I mean, of course, because then it puts you in the position of a top five pick. Uh, I, I mean, I, the, 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 it, if this is truly it, 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 if if there really isn't enough talent on the scene, then yes, it's time to tear it down and just let's let's rebuild it from the from the bottom up. So the thing is, though, you Rosen starts this year. You see what you have in him. Exactly. Say, say he's decent this year. What what position do they pick? Say they running, have a top back. Five next year. running back, you go, uh, you go defense pass rusher, you go, you something like that. If you last year, I wanted the Dolphins to it. My whole goal for the offense, the Dolphins last year was to concentrate on the offensive line and accept, and they they picked some offensive linemen second, third, fourth round, but they needed, they needed, did this team needs a lot. There's not a lot on this team, there's not. I mean, this is – they're not a good team. They are not a good team. And they have le- they do have Tunsil, though, at tackle. He's He's been pretty good. Yeah, when he's healthy. Yeah. Which is rarely. Some other news, too, Frank. Uh, Carly Lloyd trying to kick in the NFL. What are your thoughts on that? Well, <laughs> it's risky, but – she couldn't be worse than some of the kickers are out here. I was I was going to bring this up. It's a very controversial topic. Uh, I'm all for it. I think if she can, if she really thinks she can do it, uh, all, by all means, go ahead. Um, there's obviously people that are going to say that it's just not, um, it's just not going to work out. I mean, but she's she's only going to she be a kicker. Go she's going to be yeah. a kicker. Oh, I mean, oh, oh, I mean, I mean, heaven help her on a kickoff return or <laughs> or something like that. Or I guess maybe you'll have your punter. The kickoff returns. I mean, that there's uh, there's always been there's been several teams that have had separate kickoff guys and field goal guys, field goal uh, kickers. It's so. I mean, uh, there's some bad kickers out there. The Jets, the Jets need a kicker. I could see her kicking for the Jets. She's she would be strictly a place kicker. Yes, yeah, she would not be doing kickoffs. I can promise you that much. She would get lit the fuck up. Uh, Keenan Allen, you see what he said about her? He goes, yeah. He goes. It would kind of be like the stampede scene from The Lion King if they blocked the kick. <laughs> <laughs> that was ice cold. I think on the off chance she gets hit, the complete thing is absolutely ridiculous. Even the small percentage chance that she has of taking a hit on the field if she's a place kicker is not worth it. Like, half these guys but don't get up. For, but, hit but the 55, thing is, and she hit from 55. But the thing is, it's that, that that's her choice. I mean, if she's willing to take that risk, I mean, I give her all go being like, yeah, sure, go ahead. I yeah. mean, but what's going to be the narrative if she does get hit? Who's going to get the blame? Is she going to get the blame for being? Oh, everyone will be for going, sure. <laughs> it, 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 for sure. And if it's I, not I the think, NFL, I don't even acknowledge it. I just let sure. it pass. I, no, no, I don't think I, I don't think that they so should. The I think it would look worse if they didn't let her allow her to do it because that's just like against the whole fair opportunity thing. I think if if somebody is capable of doing a certain job in a sport, no matter what their gender is, I think they should be able to do it. If she is fully capable to be a kicker in the NFL, 
Yeah, go ahead. Are you guys old enough to remember Mayon Rayon? No. No, me. I'm not. And I'm, I got a decade on the other guys. Yeah. So. <laughs> 1992, 93, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning were an expansion team. Or oh, oh, oh yeah. Team. yeah. Okay, and okay. And they had in, uh, some preseason games, and she actually was on her minor league team, Mayon Rayon, playing goalie. I don't know. I just think you're playing with fire. I think if you open it up once, you're just asking for more to be let go. And then, I don't know. For me, I'm a no on it. But like you said, Avery, if she wants to do it, by all means, you know. And, that, and I, I seem to remember, but I can't seem to get verification. So this could be one of those false memory situations that uh, during the 1995 uh, spring training when these scabs were out there, I seem to remember the Mets having a woman playing their base. Huh. Yeah, I don't know, but I, I now now that name is familiar. Man, Rayon, she actually played in a game. Frank, she played. Uh, she oh, played a pe- game, yes. Yeah, right. like she suited yeah. up for the Lightning. Yeah, you know, it's funny. One day, I was looking at my all she my played dad's the entire old, period. She played yeah. the entire period. I was looking at all my dad's old memorabilia, and I saw this Tampa Bay Lightning signed puck, and I was like. Who is that? He was like, it's Mayon Ray. I don't know how to pronounce her name fully, but I was like, who is that? And he's like, oh, it's like the first ever women goalie. I, I thought it's so cool. Like, if you're, like I said, if you're capable to do it, by all means, you know, you're, her and you're willing to that risk, go ahead. Her brother played in the NHL. Her brother played in the NHL. Really? Yeah. Was on the uh, 2003 Devils, in fact. Listen, you are just a walking encyclopedia, Frank. I in fact, <laughs> and in no fact they had another that. league. They had a summer league a, uh, that lasted for about two or three years called Roller Hockey International. See, you're incredible. I just don't know how you do it. And a, uh, Mayon Rayon actually played for uh, the team that played at the Meadowlands called the New Jersey Rock and Rollers. <laughs> Frank, how the fuck do you know that? <laughs> Did you guys know Frank, all of Frank's million track list of the songs he sings are all, he doesn't write any of them down, I found out. Nope. Frank, I have a question. So uh, I, I think the fans probably need an update. How, how's the website coming along? Is it uh, almost ready? They're supposed yeah. to give me an update today, uh, but it, it, it's progressing as far as I could tell. Okay. They're showing, me, they're, they're showing me different things here and there, landing pages. Hopefully soon we'll be able to launch. It's good, yeah, but, but it's progressing, I would guess. I told you, Frank, it's probably because you have so much shit on that site. Oh, yeah, that's that the, the migration why. alone is probably what the big oh, deal it's, is. It's, it's just getting take everything a long over. time. I expect yeah. it to take at least two months. 20 year process there. Got 20 years of work on that site. So just got to trust the process, Frank. Uh, of course, the Mets are teasing again. Mets got runners at the corners, one out against Kimbrell, 0-2 to Ligaris. And Kimbrell was not touching the strike zone and got out to a 3-0 count against Rosario, then got to a 3-1 count, and Rosario grounded out to second on 3-1. So right. I, yep. just, I, I hate when this shit is, like this that is happens. Typical, this is typical Mets, and, and Juan Ligaris is back to being 180. Yeah, and the thing is, like, with Frazier on deck, uh, you know, he hit that clutch three-run bomb against the Nationals a couple weeks ago to tie the game when they were down three in the ninth. But I just the way things are going in the last couple of days and with Frazier in the last couple of months, I don't, I don't, I think this game's over. I, I don't think Frazier ties the game. It, it, it's typical match, just to tease you. Ooh, Ligaris just barely checked his swing there on a rising ball in the strike zone. That it was almost a bad strikeout. Um, yeah, I. I just like the thing is, the Mets got themselves in such a huge hole tonight, down ten to one. That like, there wasn't any coming back from this. No, no, that, that, that you know, that, 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 you know, when you're in a race, you do have to pull the pitcher, and, and Syndergaard should have been pulled after after it was eight. What drives me crazy was last night when they were down three runs and Mickey Moron put in Chris Mazza as eighth man in the bullpen. This is why he's. A, this is why he's got to still be fired. Yeah, I honestly think a good manager would be worth five to ten more wins than him. Yeah, and that's definitely true. Like he just like, why are you putting him in a game that's you know that's still in reach to put it out of reach? 
Matt Zola, he, he gave up a run, but he, he was getting smacked. He has off. no intensity. There's no, there's never any urgency. Lagares just got froze badly and struck out looking. So now the Mets are down to their final out. Frazier comes up to the plate with as the tying run and uh, fly out to left field. Let me hit into a double play. Let me strike out looking or swing at a pitch a mile away. In other words, I don't know how to hit. In other words, I ain't worth shit. Kimbrell uh, just completely froze Ligaris on that pitch. That was actually pretty good. I think he... Just typical, typical Mets, always just teasing, never pleasing. <sighs> yeah, well, so Frank, you reviewed the famous Popeye's chicken sandwich the other day. Tell us a little about that. It was good. Uh, of course, now that they're all sold out, they, 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 they're pulling them off the shit. They, they, they're shutting it down for a while. Yeah, they said they'll bring them back. I think that's crazy. They're a chicken place. Like, what? That they, well, don't, have, that they don't have chicken sandwiches? You're saying it's crazy? What happened is that they're going to pull back and make sure that they have enough, I guess. They didn't. Re- I, they did not realize that this was going to happen, but what a PR move. Jeez. Todd Frazier, fly out to the moon, just ends the game with a lazy fly ball to right field. Mets drop and the they they're saying, easy peasy. Mets drop their fifth straight, and they're fifth. And they're going to this low, low losing streak. Will, they will by this time next week. The Mets will be back below five hundred. You heard it here first. <laughs> Ooh, okay, Frank. Okay, this is really not a time to. They're hit. not going to. I, in fact, I don't think they're going to win another ten games. I just like I. This is not the know, rest of the season. Yep. There's ups and downs in a baseball season, of course, but this is the worst time to you know to hit in the fucking valley right now for the Mets. Like, there's really... They were at their peak for the and, last... And, and, and it was and after... It was bad. After Mike Francesca declared them a fun team, too. So it was like they got double double whammied. Yeah, it was after he declared them dead is when they started to get hot again. And then after he said that they're a fun team, and he apparently told everyone to not give up on them when he was blasting them, <laughs> that now they're shit again. So... Yeah, they, they, they're done. They're done. I just like the thing is though, they, only- they, they, if, if, if this team is serious, they got to do some major moves this off season, and there's one major move. Mookie Betts. No, Mookie Betts is not a free agent yet. Rendon. 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 Technically, the Mets, uh, their season pretty much comes down to tomorrow, right? I, I feel like, how many games are there left? There's about there's twenty nine there's thirty games left I think uh, they're four behind the Cubs and they yeah I mean if they win tomorrow then they're three behind which is what they were coming into this game and then they play the Phillies and the Nationals on the road which is going to uh, tough but and, and my prediction is they're going to get swept tomorrow swept in Philly swept <laughs> in Washington and then when they come back home they're going to get swept by the Phillies again. The thing is, you and have to... And then the Marlins are going to come in, and then the Marlins are going to win four in a row. So it's going to be a 20-game losing streak. They, it's going to be reverse of money ball. They have to, you know, you get put up against the teams you're trailing, you know, and you're competing against... And then after the Marlins... Costs, you got to capitalize. And after the Marlins, it's, it's the Dodgers. So, you know, that means... That's, let's see, 15, 19, 22, uh, 20, you know, 23, 26... 35 in a row. They're going to they're lose 38 in a row. They're going to they're gonna go, they're gonna, they're gonna finish the season with 67 wins and 95 losses. And then next year, they're going to lose their first 42. And then maybe they'll fire Mickey Callaway. Probably not. But, uh, yeah. No, they'll bring back Todd Frazier. Todd Frazier next year will be uh, – the next year, their, their starting lineup will be Aaron Oftier, Todd Frazier, the two of them will be a combined 0 for 800, and they'll still play every day. Well, hopefully they'll have Nimmo back by this weekend. Uh, he played his second rehab game in a row uh, and went two for four, and he hit a home run tonight. So, you know, hopefully they'll have some reinforcements back. But, you know, everything's going wrong right now that the pitching hasn't been there. Uh, I was saying over the weekend that the bullpen looked taxed, but now they look fine, and it's been the starting pitching that's 
sucked in the first two games. So, you know, we can most likely expect DeGrom to go out and dominate tomorrow, but, you know, yeah, the backs and that, were, and that means no, no run support. No run support is right. They score seven runs tonight when they give up 10, and, you know, tomorrow DeGrom will probably give up two, two or less, and the, the Mets will probably score one run. I, my prediction is they'll probably lose 2-1, but it's just really not good. It's when you go head-to-head with the teams you're competing against with the playoffs and you can't beat these teams – to be the as cliche as it sounds, to be the best, you got to beat the best. Well, we 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 now awful. know it was all fraud. It was just beating up on the little sisters of the poor. Now they now they're back to reality. They're going to be back below five hundred. It's at not home. at home too. Like I, I, if we were on the road right now, I'd be like, okay, let we're going to take maybe hopefully we'll take one. But you can't let them come into our house and just put it up a ten spot that quickly. No, the thing is, it wasn't just beating up on the little you know, the house of the blind, it was like they were just pe- playing so unconscious for such a long period that they were bound to come back down to earth at some point. They can get hot again, but time's running out and the games are limited now. It's just, that's just baseball. There's, it's literally a roller coaster of stretches and, and momentum. And, you know, the Mets are really, they, they've hit a rut right now at the wrong time in the most pivotal stretch. And, 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 when, and when you have, when you get to wear a shitty uniform, you look shitty. It just puts you in the shitty mood. I blame. I really blame those uniforms. I really <laughs> fucking blame those uniforms. If we are looking for a scapegoat, things did start to take a turn from the uniforms. I mean, they swept the damn Cleveland Indians last week. Like, no one expected that. Like, that's a really good baseball team and one of the hottest teams in the league. And then it all went to shit afterwards. I mean, I know the Braves had the Mets number, but we weren't expecting a sweep. And we weren't – the Cubs have been – playing poorly recently and they're bad on the road and they have shaky pitching and shaky bullpen and, and still somehow they've dominated the Mets. So yeah. it's not, it's not good. So do you, do you guys, you want to roll it into ask the tank? Yeah, I got, I actually got a few that just came in. I don't know if you saw them. Um, I can read them off if you want. Yeah, I haven't seen them. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. They all came in kind of like right before we kicked off. Um, Frank, one person wants to know, uh, Greg Rack wants to know, I've noticed that Frank usually has an exorbitant amount of keys on his keychain. What are those for? Oh, well, let's see. I got, uh, there's like a, a key for, uh, two, key, two keys to get into my apartment, a key to get into, uh, the courtroom. Uh, a key, uh, my, well, uh, I don't actually have a car key. I have a key to a storage area. I have a key that's a lock to a bin in the storage area. I have my old house apartment key. They changed my apartment key, but I don't know why I keep it on the air for some reason. And a couple other keys that are mystery keys. I really don't know what they're for. Now nice. you have keys on your keychain that you just don't know what they're for. No. Very credible. <laughs> Very credible. <laughs> <laughs> I think once I know one's for my uncle, my uncle's uh, apartment. His like spare key I have on here is one of them somewhere. No, oh, God, Frank. <laughs> what is <it>? There's seven, <laughs> seven of them mystery keys. They're for decoration. <laughs> you think it's you think it's superstitious? You think, are you superstitious with your keys, Frank? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm superstitious with the Mets, and those white uniforms certainly jinx them. So I'm always superstitious. Frank, hopefully someone's listening and like they'll just send you one of the like a white unit, one of those jerseys in the mail. I would actually want to be too tempted to burn it. <laughs> right, I really, I really hate it that much. We got another one here. Uh, Tony Tone fourteen wants to know when are you bringing back Tank's Tales? X the Tank. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, that was something I did on the, with the old guys. And I usually did it in dead times, and this isn't dead times. Right. I think I think we could probably do some content around that eventually. Uh, uh, yeah, if, yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe video, maybe video too. Do a little something different. A little I worked spin with on this it. guy. I worked with this guy Curtis Ward pre- previously, and I'm going to see if I can work with him again on a couple of other things uh, of doing uh, a special video for some on this dates. Nice. All right, let me see what else we got here. I'm going to throw the hashtag in. 
Just a little side note. Uh, I heard Hard Knocks was very corny again last night. Oh, Mine's- it was it was awful. <laughs> Care to elaborate? Well, they went to Winnipeg, so you got the whole thing about Canada and going. Wait, to Canada. Frank. Frank, before you keep going, didn't something happen with the release of the show? Didn't it get released late? Yeah, at eleven fifteen, I heard about that. People are saying that it didn't come out on time. Uh. I watched it on HBO on the TV, so that oh, didn't okay. happen. Uh, yeah, that might have been a streaming blunder. That might have been a streaming, like, you know, sometimes the servers and the streamings get screwed up. Yeah, I, I, I heard that. And I also heard, uh, so John Gruden basically has carried the whole series this, this uh, offseason from what I've heard. But he's been so, like, like it's, like, it's like he's, like, shtick. Like, he's writing it as he's doing it. And it's for, it seems forced. Yeah, I heard he's like a born actor, but and I heard Derek Carr's been pretty lame too. He like Derek Carr wants like the cameras off of him. Yeah, they said he's kind of like aw- like he's awkward on camera. Yeah, he wants the cameras off. Although I remember I've actually seen a clip of him that he was t- like ten years old, like his brother's hype man. Yeah, when he was going to go high when he was trying to get his brother into Heisman. You ever see that video? Yeah, I have. That's a famous video. And then he came up. Uh, the day that uh, his his brother was drafted, you're gonna draft me, and in, uh, in, uh, in, te- in a couple of years you're gonna be dra- 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 standing up here next to me. And then in 15 years I'm gonna be on Hard Knocks with John Gruden, <laughs> <laughs> asking him where he's going to dinner, and he's he won't I won't be catching the invite from him. That's all we got for the Tank Tales, guys. I just checked. Um, so for some reason, some people just they they. they they always ask about the condiments on the hot dog, and they <laughs> and they always ask about the booze, and like the, you've answered those questions like yeah. literally a million times. So yeah. <laughs> that, that's about it. Oh, one one funny thing before before we uh, we head to the end. <laughs> Me and Frank, when we we met, had mentioned we met up with uh, Alyssa Rose, came to the barstool section on the game Saturday night, and she goes. She, of course, is the social media coordinator for the Mets. And she goes, yeah, Frank, she goes, I really want to get you on an interview. She goes, but the Mets aren't too happy with you. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Be happy they're losing? Come on. <laughs> She's like, you're way I'm too gonna negative. I'm going to tell it as it is. I'm the tank. I have no filter. <laughs> the tank fucking says what he wants, but the Mets keep, a te- keep tabs on Frank and whoever else talks shit about them. They're like Ryan in the office writing down who wrongs them in the little book. Well, I, I've I've been I've been blocked by two Mets now, one uh, one who's gone and uh, Todd Frazier. Who's the one who's gone? Jose Reyes. Oh God! I can only imagine what you said to him. <laughs> I called him the worst goddamn baseball player. Oh, and I I actually came up with the Jose song last year. Oh. Jose can no longer play. It's time to go away. Jose can no longer play. It's time to go away. So it turns out, and from what I found out, Gary Cohen doesn't know who Frank is, but the New York Mets organization does, apparently. So, <laughs> you know, they probably have your picture up with like a big red X <laughs> drawn through it. <laughs> well, they've compared me to, the, to Randy Quaid in Major League Two, so. To be honest, they have to know who he is because literally, if we're hashtagging Mets with everything with Frank, so if they just look up their own name, he had three hundred and sixty thousand views last week. There's no chance he's not at the top. So it's like they're probably like there he is again, just all over our feet in our face, just shitting on us. And no, when he's... they when they play like shit, I'm gonna shit on them because they deserve to be <laughs> shit on. <laughs> We need to, we need to get you to do that interview though with Alyssa. That I think that would be great. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna be oh well they tried no fuck that dude uh, yeah they didn't, they didn't they're down ten to one today fuck the fact that they almost came back in and, and made it close fuck that they shouldn't have been down ten to one in the first place they played like shit the first three innings. Oh my. God. Yeah, I, I mean, at least you won't be like Mike Francesa, who, you know, he talks all this shit, and then the guys come in for the interview, and he kisses their ass, so. Unless they're Brody Van Wagening. 
I mean, this was they 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 played a horrible baseball game for the first three innings today. And here's this fucking moron. <laughs> I thought our guys fought back. Uh, you know, we're never say say die team. Uh, we're in. You, you know, game, there was one but... time I actually thought he was going to start singing the song "Praise You" by uh, Fat Boy Slim. Can you take it away, Frank, as our outro? <laughs> We battled long and hard. We really, really, really tried. We battled very toughly tonight. Even though we lost, we need to praise them like we should. All right. And on that note, it was a busy week in the Allow Me to Be Frank universe. Uh, Thanks again to our loyal listeners. And catch us next week. Same time, same bet channel. All right, stop.